as you move around, your body builds up static electricity and that could easily damage the components you touch. Hello and welcome to The Soundtest Room. My name is Jakob Hack, I'm your host and you're watching a Hack Attack episode. This episode is going to be all about DIY electronics and the tools you need when you want to build something yourself from scratch. You see, I'm starting a new series where I'm building a delay pedal from ground up. I will be showing you all of that in upcoming videos. Some of these tools you might not need, but you definitely need a soldering iron. Now, you don't need as an advanced unit as I've got. Mine is a bit dirty, I've been using it a lot. This is a soldering station, but you can actually just get a soldering iron like this with a cord out that you put into the wall and it heats up. This one is a 48 watt one and I can actually set the temperature on this one, but you don't need something as big, just get a regular soldering iron. Now this little thing, it's made out of metal. I use it to clean the tip of my soldering iron and keep it nice and shiny so when you clean it off into this thing you always put a bit of solder onto it so the tip is nice and shiny now my soldering station comes with a holder for the soldering iron so you put it in there and it keeps it in place I do recommend that you get some kind of a holder or stand so that you can put the soldering iron on it when you're not working with it another thing you're gonna need is some solder this is the regular one millimeter solder there are thicker ones and there are thinner ones like this one this one is only about 0.6 millimeters in size and I use this for some really fine electronics when I want to do some finer stuff. But this is basically what you're going to need when you're working with regular components and regular boards like this. Another thing you see here is called helping hands. So it's basically just a heavy stand solid iron with some holders on it. I actually have two of these, but I couldn't find the other one. And I use these when I want to solder something together and I need more than just two hands. So a pair of helping hands is good to have. You don't need this, but I do recommend it. Another thing I do recommend is a magnifying glass because some of the components have some very, very small printed text on it. And when you want to double check stuff and also double check your soldering joints so they're not cold joints or, you know, badly done, then a magnifying glass is required. And I do recommend that you get one of those. I do recommend you get something for when you want to desolder stuff because sometimes you just have to remove the solder to remove the component because you placed it wrong or put it in the wrong holes or something. Then you need to desolder it. So this is a suction thing. When you press this, it sucks the solder up. This one is an anti-static one. There is also this, basically copper, and you touch the solder with these and these suck it up. Another thing that can be really handy is this thing right here. This is an anti-static wristband. You place it around your wrist like this, a metal plate inside here and it connects to this cord and then you just put this thing onto something that grounds basically leads to something that goes into the ground that way static electricity will dissipate through the cord as you move around your body builds up static electricity and that could easily damage the components you touch so having one of these could save you a lot of money and a lot of time trying to search through broken components that you might have abused with static electricity. You're gonna need a pair of pliers too. One like this to cut off the component legs uh, of the things you solder or cut off cables and stuff. And then you need something like this. I mostly use this when I actually build enclosures and stuff, but sometimes I need something to bend the component legs with. And then I use something like this. So pliers are very good to have. I also do recommend that you do get a multimeter. This is a digital multimeter from Velleman, and these comes in all types and models and sizes. To start out, you need something to be able to measure resistance and voltage. And these are basically the tools you need to start building. And then you just need a project, circuit board of some kind, components and stuff. But I'm gonna tell you more about that when I start building the delay that we've got here. So that's something to look forward to. As usual, Doug Woods, Colin Sweeney, and me, Yoko Pack at thesoundtwistroom.com, wishes you a very productive week. Now go finger all of your stuff and have a lot of fun doing it.